Now is a really good time of year to walk out in your cornfields. And one of the things, unfortunately, you're probably going to see is a nutrient deficiency and hopefully not too many nutrient deficiencies, but you might see a number of different ones out there. We want to talk today about what you may see out in the field and how you can identify that problem for sure. First of all, if you see leaves that don't look right, if they're not perfect, investigate a little further. See if you've got a disease out there or if you may have one of these nutrient deficiencies, we've got a great nutrient deficiencies app that you can take a look at. Uh, just search for Ag PhD uh, in, in the Apple Store or in the Google Play Store. Take a look and see what you got for, uh, for choices there. This is one that you may want to consider keeping on your smartphone. I know I certainly do when I'm out in the field because if I'm looking at something, I say, man, it looks kind of like this. Uh, now I've got something to judge by and, and see what I'm looking at. If I'm looking at the top part of the plant versus the bottom, that can give you a place to start. Uh, the reason that I would say that is because some nutrients are going to be mobile within the plant and others are immobile. If they're mobile within the plant, that means when I start to run short in my new growth, well, I pull it out of those lower leaves. So the lower leaves will show the deficiency. Now, if I've got something that's immobile within the plant, like many of the micronutrients and sulfur, well, they're gonna stay in those lower leaves and the top leaves are the ones that are going to show the nutrient deficiency. All right, even for me, a lot of times I don't trust what I'm seeing. So I look at it and I say, well, I think it's a sulfur deficiency, but maybe it's a zinc deficiency. I just take the plants and send them in for analysis. That's really what I encourage you to do, just to double check to make sure you've got the right thing. Because if you think it's sulfur and it turns out to be zinc, and you apply a bunch of sulfur and nothing happens, you go, uh-oh, and now you're two weeks down the road or something like that. Okay, so now you really suffered from that zinc deficiency that you happen to have. So yes, I'm all for going out and scouting the field and trying to figure this out yourself, using our app to look at the pictures and compare them and that type of thing. But I really encourage you, send the affected plants in for analysis and then you can verify what's really going on. Let's look at one of these things though, Brian, that is pretty commonly misdiagnosed out in fields. And I want, I want to talk about it because it's really important. When you look at the lower leaves on a corn plant and they start turning brown, so often farmers will say, well, I'm firing. I just haven't had rain recently. And if you think you've got firing at the bottom of the plant, take a closer look at the leaves. If we see browning around the outside edges of the leaf, oftentimes that's a potassium deficiency. We're running short in a nutrient. Or if we're browning starting at the tip of the leaf and in a V-shaped pattern moving up that midrib, well, we're likely short of nitrogen. See, when a crop is short of one or more nutrients, it becomes a water waster. Because how do plants get in a nutrient like nitrogen? Well, they suck water in. So when the plant is short of nitrogen, what does it do? It just starts pulling in water, pulling in water, and pulling in water, hoping to get that food or the nitrogen that it needs. If it's short of nitrogen, well, it just wasted a whole bunch of water trying to get the nitrogen. One comment I would make along those lines is, we see these deficiencies in spots and fields. So if currently you're just applying the same exact rate of fertilizer all across an entire field, or let's just say you've done that because you only pulled one soil sample in the entire field, I just really encourage you, start setting up your fields in grids or zones, something like that, and put the fertilizer where it's needed and don't apply it where it's not needed. What I'm getting at here is you may have an area of the field that let's say has lower organic matter. For whatever reason, it's a good producing area, but it has low organic matter, so it doesn't have a lot of free nitrogen coming available. Maybe that area does need more nitrogen. You also, chances are, have many areas of your farm that could need some more potassium. And really, it's that yellowing on the outside edge of the leaf that I see most commonly. That's potassium deficiency. We want you not only to get your parts per million level up there, we need you to get your base saturation K percentage up there at least into the 4 to 8% range. And then that yellowing will go away. You'll find out that you have better stocks and better grain quality and you'll have higher yields. And when you talk about that yellowing going away, Brian, that's building up that soil program and focusing on the next crop you're gonna put out there. You can foliar feed with a lot of these nutrients. You can get them into the plant. The problem is the yield damage has already been done. The hit has already been taken. You've lost yield. That's fine, you just have to call a spade a spade. I lost yield, but I'm not letting it happen to me again. Now doing nothing about those spots in your field, hey, you're gonna keep losing yield in those same areas for the rest of your farming career. 
So get after it. Figure out what's happening in those spots. Figure out if you have a nutrient deficiency and get it addressed. The biggest key is you've got to get out in your fields and take a look at do I have problems or is everything looking great? And while you're out in the fields, you may see our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next.